Hi, I'm Joshua Kemble, and this is vlog number 87. This is the vlog where I talk about quarterly stories, which is my graphic novel that I hand write, hand letter, and hand ink, and then hand to you, hopefully someday in print. But until that day, it's available serializing for your reading enjoyment all the way up to page 49, which I'm currently penciling, at quarterlystories.com. So I'd encourage you guys to check that out. And if you're curious, you don't want to head outside of YouTube, you can also check out a little sample of it on my main page uh, where I did an audio version um, and video version um, on my YouTube channel. So it goes through all of chapter one. So that's a little sample. It's a little bit of a darker chapter. The second chapter is a much lighter chapter, but it's, it's a good introduction. Anyhow, back to my intro. Um, Quarterly Stories is a story that's very personal to me. It's about faith and mental illness. And this is the vlog where I document the process and the progress of creating that graphic novel on top of being a full-time father, a full-time husband, and a full-time art director. So I'm heading to work where I work as an art director um, doing graphic design and illustration uh, for the souvenir industry. And I'm, you know, heading to work and starting to think about what I accomplished over the weekend and what I'm hoping to accomplish tonight. So for those of you who are new to this vlog, since we're like this many episodes in, we're like 87, uh, you know, there's a good chance that this might be your first time stumbling on this channel. So let me explain. I uh, have been a freelance illustrator cartoonist. I won like the Zarek grant a long time ago for a comic I did called Numb. Um, and I'm, I'm always working on cartooning. I also completed a graphic novel that, you know, was full color. It was 128 pages. It's on my main site, joshuakimmel.com, in, in the comic section. And it's called uh, Jacob's Apartment. But uh, a weird thing happened after I finished it, uh, my publishing deal was dropped, and I actually, uh, in retrospect, wasn't extremely happy with the work, and I think that's partially because it was my first finished graphic novel. I've had work published in anthologies, and I've had you know some of my design work appear in a bunch of design annuals. Um, and my main industry for a long period of time was t-shirt design. So I spent about, you know, 10, 10 of those 15 years just doing t-shirt design as my bread and butter job um, while I was a freelance illustrator and cartoonist. Anyhow, point being, with um, all of that background, uh, you know, if you look at my history in art or, or my experience in art, um, a lot of the time, while I was making projects that were really cool, um, most of the time it was for other people. Uh, like I illustrated this book called Barbarians, What is Best in Life? Um, and I think they ended up retitling it to uh, Barbarians, A Handbook for Aspiring Savages. And it's a really fun book. Um, it was kind of funny. It was interesting. It was, you know, a lot of work to illustrate, even though it was just black and white illustrations. But the thing that uh, kept kind of coming up um, to me, like my entire time freelancing and working on this stuff was like wanting to do my own personal work. And I did manage to kick out a full color 128 page graphic novel in that time, but I wasn't entirely happy with it. Like to the point where I could try to run like a Kickstarter and maybe publish it, but overall I felt like I had rushed it partially because I had a publisher at the time and so I just felt this pressure to get it done and so I took shortcuts that I didn't wasn't really happy with um, you know I made decisions on on the story to kind of edit out a lot more than I think was was a uh, necessary for that genre to work because it was semi-autobiographical um, and so I ended up with this kind of like project that had it been published 
I probably wouldn't have pushed you effectively because I frankly wasn't entirely happy with the result. Not that you're always going to be happy with the result as an artist, but anyhow, so I'm kind of explaining a little bit of my personal history um, for those of you who are new to the channel to understand why I'm doing this vlog. So I finally had a son and, um, and right before having a son, I went to graduate school and I finished my master's, my MFA in illustration at Cal State Long Beach. And during the last year of working on my master's, uh, this thing just kind of popped in my head. Like I, I can't explain it, but it's like, like a realization that all of the artwork that I had been creating for, you know, the 15 years that I've been doing this professionally, um, hadn't really been what I wanted to do. And so I had this realization that like what I love in comics, because I'm a nerd, like I love comics. I went to art school initially, like for my undergraduate degree to make comics. And as a graduate student, I felt like I was being pushed into these corners of like, you need to be a painter, or if you do a comic, it needs to be full color. And, um, and I just had this kind of wake up moment of like, you know what? No, what I want to do, what I've always wanted to do is a black and white comic book that is no holes barred autobiographical story that is uncomfortable. Like it's uncomfortable to tell because it's not going to make me look good. And, um, and aside from that tells a compelling story that feels like a little slice of life or a little bit of truth out there in, um, in a world that, you know, where we, we wear masks or we pretend to be people we aren't or, you know, like if, if you live in the Hollywood area where everybody's got a pitch, everybody's, you know, heading somewhere, everyone's an aspiring director. And I just, I love um, that autobiography in, on one sense, it plays into that whole thing by being kind of narcissistic, and I'll be I'll be totally honest about that. You really run the risk of coming across as a complete narcissist making autobiographical work, but you're skating the line between that and between kind of giving a middle finger to the world of um, of like fluff and pretend. Uh, you're, by, by kind of opening up, uh, you know, a well of honesty. I know it sounds corny, but it, my, my point being, um, autobiogra autobiographical work is what drew me uh, deeply into underground comics in the first place. And, uh, and you know, is kind of my interest as an artist. It's, it's uh, aside from that, I also have a story that I really want to tell. And I've gotten into that a little bit um, in previous vlogs. So, um, you know, I don't wanna to touch on that too much right now, but my point being um, that was kind of like this big moment for me, it was like realizing like, I hadn't really been doing the comic that I wanted to do uh, th this whole time, that I've been working on comics, that I've been working as a professional illustrator and designer. That last year in grad school, I, I started Quarterly Stories, and what the impetus for making Quarterly Stories was, was to make the comic that I always wanted to make. So I put in it all sorts of things that I love about comics. It's kind of a love letter um, to everything that I love about comics and love in art. So I decided that when I do it, that I would hand do everything, that I would hand letter because the comics that I admired and loved um, were hand lettered. And because I had done comics before where I would just leave space for the word bubbles and then I'd do every, all the text digitally and it just never felt, like the end product never felt right to me. So I decided, number one, I'm gonna hand letter and hand ink the entire thing. Um, the second decision that I made was to not phone it in on any page, meaning I wanted all of the pages to be the best page that I could do the day I did them. 
I took a lot of shortcuts and did a lot of shorthand and um, and I'm not against that if it's intentional um, like you'll notice like in chapter two of quarterly stories I get really shorthanded and goofy and kind of like you know I'm kind of having fun with the style being very cartoony kind of throwing some of the laws of anatomy out the window so I'm not saying like it's a perfect book I'm just saying that every page as I proceeded forward with it would be um, as good as I possibly could make it. Number three was that I would actually write it out before I got to making it. So that was a huge thing for me because prior to that, a lot of my comics I would write out either by doing roughs, um, and that's how I would write my book, or I would write it, um, in the case of Jacob's Apartment, like I had a, a, a planned story arc but I wrote it a page at a time. So I wouldn't really script it, I would just kind of rough it out, and that was how I wrote it. And what I didn't like about that was I ended up with these stories that seemed kind of haphazard, like they didn't really have an arc, and they would present all these plot threads that were never tied off. And, um, and what that left me feeling as a creator was that I wasn't really telling effective stories, and I wasn't giving them time to breathe. So. Number three, I would I would write out the stories the way I would write a regular story. Like I would, you know, open a Word document and write a first draft, and then I would send that first draft to people I really trusted and respected, and have them give me criticism and feedback, and then I would take that and I would refine it, and I would send them the second draft, and so on until I had a really strong story. Um, and I would have the entire arc mapped out so that I wasn't heading in a blind direction so that I didn't end up like I did with Jacob's apartment at the point where I had kind of reached an ending and I was unsure about how to tie everything off. Um, and really, frankly, I think a lot of that insecurity was just kind of exposing the fact that I wasn't really writing that solid of a story. Now keep in mind, I'm proud of that previous graphic novel and by no means would I, you know, say it's a bad book, like, you know, um, but it's not the best I could do and it's not something where I would want to invest my time and my money um, promoting, you know, something that I didn't necessarily even believe in anymore. When I approached quarterly stories, um, those were the main things. The other thing that I decided was that I didn't want to make myself a hero in my story. And I was thinking about particularly people like Harvey Pekar, who in his writing, um, part of why the autobiography works is that it's very like down on himself. And not down on himself like beating himself up, more like just really like <laughs> uncomfortably honest about, about himself to the point where he's not just telling you stuff to self-aggrandize, he's telling you stuff to really explain himself as a character. And some of that stuff is really uncomfortable um, to write and probably a lot more comfortable to read than it is to write. So I decided that when I'm writing this, I'm also going to head into territories where I feel uncomfortable telling uh, these things, where I feel uncomfortable with um, maybe something I did in the past where I feel uncomfortable about it. So uh, instead of heading away from it or trying to make it all pretty and fluffy, I decided that's an area that I actually want to write because I think that that's the kind of subject matter that makes autobiographical work interesting. And then of course there's an overall theme and a message that I want to convey and I'm not going to give all of that away because I'm hoping that you guys will go to quarterlystories.com and read it as it's going. Um, and then, you know, once it's collected, maybe buy it and check it out and, and, you know, read it for yourself and see what the themes are yourself. But point being, and that's what led me to creating uh, this vlog is this vlog is my way of kind of keeping myself accountable. Well, I am. I'm jumping ahead. So that was grad school, and then I had a son, and for the first two years of my son's life, I found that I had no time for anything. I ended up getting this job as an art director, and my first few years as an art director, 
a lot of it was spent just treading water, trying to stay um, afloat, trying to figure out this new thing because I had never art directed before. Um, I had taught students at college. Um, <coughs> I had taught like art classes and stuff, but art direction was a totally different gig. It was a different, uh, full of different politics. It was full of different challenges like leading, leading people who are already trained in art. Um, uh, you know, just all sorts of challenges to, to growing as a leader. And so my first two years were really spent doing that. And I found like two years in that I really wasn't working on any personal work. And so I actually also noticed two years in that my own personal work was starting to not be as strong. And I mean like for not just personal work, but my corporate work was suffering from it because I wasn't engaged as an artist. And I noticed this, by the way, um, it's just a little, a side note, but this is something I've noticed about younger artists or artists that um, only do the day job and aren't working on kind of like dream projects, is that oddly enough, it actually causes your own uh, professional work to suffer because it's like you're not really challenging yourself as an artist doing the cool stuff that you want to do without the, um, you know, without the committee uh, that's telling you, you know, to change or distort, uh, the things that, um, that you're working on. So anyhow, the point being, um, I decided, uh, that I would get back on, uh, quarterly stories. And so I, you know, basically have been working on that since. And I started this vlog because a friend of mine named Kevin Cross uh, was having a rough time. He stayed with us and did some freelance for my business, that the business that I work for, that I art direct for. And um, in that time, um, really good friend of mine, he talked to me and kind of convinced me to do vlogs. And um, prior to doing vlogs, while I was getting back into doing quarterly stories, I was using like Facebook updates to show my progress on my comic. Um, and I still do this, um, although most of the time now I, I use Instagram updates where I try to almost every day uh, have an update on my comic posted just to keep myself accountable and to keep people in the loop of like where I'm at on my book. But um, Kevin, who has like a great YouTube channel, um, which you can check out by just looking up Kevin Cross on uh, YouTube, he uh, he convinced me to do a YouTube channel and basically, you know, showed me kind of how it's sort of like the new format for vlogging and and blogging, I should say. Vlogging is kind of the new blogging, and uh, I gave it a shot, and then I really started liking vlogging. But the point of this vlog, um, one, is to get the word out about this comic that I'm very passionate about, that I'm in the process of making, and I'm doing the hard work of doing, uh, chipping in daily at it, carving away daily at it to get it done. And um, the second function of this vlog, and more important function, is to hold myself accountable to continually and consistently work on this comic. Um, so that hopefully at some point of time, and actually it's getting closer to that time, like this far into the vlog, um, it's getting closer to the time where it might actually see print and then I'll do conventioning and so on and really promote it. And hopefully, you know, hopefully you guys will be interested in checking it out and maybe picking up a copy um, when I get to that point. But the point being, um, this is really like, I kid not about this being a vlog where I need, where I want to document the progress and the process of creating this book, um, because I uh, I am doing this book uh, as a passion project. Um, I'm putting all my guns into it, like kind of all the things that I've learned um, in the years of doing art and illustration, all the things that I love about comics. I'm trying to kind of find ways to sneak into this and at the same time hopefully tell a compelling story. So that's a little bit about that. But I guess why I'm getting into that is that today I felt really good because I managed to knock out 
um, two panels of pencils last night, and as I'm heading to work, I'm thinking about the third panel, which I'm hoping to pencil, although I am at a dead stop in traffic. And so I'm gonna check in with you guys later. As you can see in the window, we're at a dead stop. All right, um, so anyhow, I'm hoping to also work on comics. So I will see you guys. Hopefully, future me will be in a few seconds uh, showing you some work on comics. Okay, so I managed to pencil panel three for page 49 of Quarterly Stories. And so my comic work for the day is done. Thanks again so much to those of you who subscribe, like, share, and comment on my videos. Um, it's really cool to see the subscription count going up and really encourages me to keep going. And I know I harp on it a lot on my vlogs, but it's because I sincerely am thankful for each one of you guys. So I hope you guys have a successful work week and um, I will see you guys next week and hopefully in the next vlog I'll be continuing uh, fighting this battle and getting these comics out. Oh, well, let me show you the page. Okay, so here's panel one, two, and three for page 49 and uh, it should be pulling out on the next uh, one which is really text heavy and it's going to get more um, kind of more close-up uh, drawings and a little more close-up of the faces of the characters as it gets to the biggest close-up, more intimate the story gets. So yeah, that's it. Did my comic work for the day. Awesome.